Welcome to Ace My Exams Learning. Let us get started with today's learning. Study the diagrams below of microorganisms and answer the questions that follow. Question. Name the group of organisms to which B and C belong respectively. Organism B belongs to the group of viruses. Viruses are microscopic infectious agents that can only replicate inside a living host cell. They are not considered fully living organisms because they lack cellular structure and cannot carry out metabolic processes independently. Organism C belongs to the group of fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms that include molds, yeasts, and mushrooms. They reproduce using spores and obtain nutrients through decomposition or symbiotic relationships. Question. Provide labels for A. 1. The correct answer is flagellum. The flagellum is a whip-like structure that enables movement in certain microorganisms, such as bacteria and some protists. It helps the organism navigate through its environment in response to stimuli. B. 2. The correct answer is nucleic acid, RNA, a DNA. Nucleic acids, such as DNA or RNA, store genetic information. In viruses, either DNA or RNA is present, which enables them to hijack a host cell's machinery to reproduce. C. 3. The correct answer is sporangium. A sporangium is a structure in fungi where spores are produced and stored. These spores are later released for reproduction and dispersal. Question. Give the letter of the organism that A is not considered to be living. The correct answer is B. Viruses, organism B, are not classified as living organisms because they lack cellular structures and cannot reproduce independently. They require a host cell to multiply. B is eukaryotic. The correct answer is C. Fungi, organism C, are eukaryotic because they have membrane-bound organelles, including a nucleus containing their genetic material. Question. Name the shape of the bacterium in diagram A. The bacterium in diagram A is bacillus or rod-shaped. Bacilli are cylindrical bacteria that can exist as single cells or in chains. Their elongated shape allows efficient absorption of nutrients and movement in liquid environments. Study the micrograph and answer the questions. Question. Identify the parts labeled A to E. 1. The structure labeled A is the rhizoid hyphae. Rhizoids are root-like structures that anchor the fungus to a substrate and aid in nutrient absorption. Hyphae are the filamentous structures that make up the body of a fungus, playing a crucial role in growth and reproduction. 2. The structure labeled B is the sporangiophore. A sporangiophore is a specialized hyphal structure that supports the sporangium, elevating it to enhance the dispersal of spores. 3. The structure labeled C is the spore. Spores are reproductive units that allow fungi to propagate and spread under favorable conditions. They are resistant to environmental stresses and play a key role in the fungal life cycle. 4. The structure labeled D is the columella. The columella is an internal structure within the sporangium that provides support and distributes nutrients to developing spores. 5. The structure labeled E is the septum. A septum is a partition that divides fungal hyphae into individual cells or compartments, controlling the flow of cytoplasm and org. Question. Use the scale line to calculate the length of the structure labeled C. To calculate the length of the structure labeled C, we follow the steps below. The measured length of C is 2.5 mm. The scale provided in the micrograph shows that 18 mm corresponds to 60 m. To calculate the actual length of C, the formula used is actual length equals measured length times scale value divided by scale length. Substituting the values. Actual length equals 2.5 by 60 divided by 18. Actual length equals 8.3 m. Thus, the actual length of the structure labeled C is 8.3 m. Question. 
Name the form of nitrogen which higher plants use. Higher plants primarily use nitrates as their source of nitrogen. Nitrates are dissolved in soil water and absorbed by plant roots, where they are converted into essential proteins and other organic compounds needed for growth and development. Question. Describe three ways in which nitrogen becomes available to higher plants. One way nitrogen becomes available to higher plants is through lightning. During thunderstorms, the intense heat from lightning causes nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere to react, forming nitrogen oxides. These compounds dissolve in rainwater and fall to the ground as nitrates, which are then absorbed by plant roots for use in protein synthesis. Another way nitrogen becomes available is through the action of free-living soil bacteria. Certain bacteria, such as Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter, play a role in nitrification, a process that converts ammonia into nitrates. These bacteria improve soil fertility by increasing the concentration of plant-usable nitrogen compounds, ensuring that plants have a sufficient supply of nutrients for growth. A third way nitrogen is made available to plants is through root nodule bacteria. Some plants, especially legumes like peas and beans, have a mutualistic relationship with rhizobium bacteria, which live in nodules on their roots. These bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia, which is then transformed into nitrates that plants can readily absorb. This process enriches the soil, benefiting both the host plant and surrounding vegetation. Question. Briefly describe the ecological role of algae under the headings below. A. As producers in ecosystems. Algae are primary producers in marine and freshwater ecosystems, meaning they are the first source of food in the food chain. They contain chlorophyll, which allows them to perform photosynthesis, a process where they use sunlight to make their own food. This food is then passed on to herbivores and other animals, providing energy for the entire ecosystem. Without algae, many aquatic organisms would not have a food source. B. In the maintenance of oxygen-carbon dioxide balance. Algae help to maintain the balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the environment. During photosynthesis, they absorb carbon dioxide from the air and water and use it to make food. At the same time, they release oxygen as a byproduct, which is essential for the survival of animals and other organisms that rely on oxygen for respiration. This process ensures that oxygen levels remain stable in the atmosphere and water. Read and answer the questions which follow. A type of bacterium called Escherichia coli, e. coli normally lives in the large intestine of humans. To determine whether E. coli is present in water, a chemical indicator is used. If the chemical indicator changes from a clear red color to a cloudy yellow color, it confirms the presence of E. coli. A group of grade 11 learners conducted an investigation to test for E. coli in water samples collected from three rivers, X, Y, and Z. The water samples were placed in glass bottles containing the clear red indicator solution. These bottles were then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for two days. After the incubation period, it was observed that only river Y showed the presence of E. coli, as indicated by the color change of the indicator solution. Question. Explain two safety precautions that the learners should take when conducting this investigation. One, the learners should wear rubber gloves to avoid contamination when handling water samples. This is important because E. coli is a harmful bacterium that can cause infections if it comes into contact with open wounds or is accidentally ingested. Gloves also prevent contamination of the water samples, ensuring accurate results. 2. Additionally, sample bottles should be attached to a string to prevent them from slipping and falling into the river. This precaution reduces the risk of drowning, injuries, or further contamination of the river by disturbed sediments or broken glass bottles. Question. Suggest one reason for incubating the sample at 37 degrees Celsius. The samples were incubated at 37 degrees Celsius because this is the normal human body temperature, which is the environment where E. coli bacteria naturally live. 
Keeping the samples at this temperature ensures that any E. coli present can grow and be detected, making the test more reliable. Question. State how E. coli could have entered river Y. 1. E. coli could have entered river Y due to a lack or absence of a proper sewage system. If human waste is not properly managed, it can leak into water sources, introducing harmful bacteria. 2. Another possible reason is that human feces contaminated the water. This can happen when sewage overflows, improper waste disposal occurs, or people use the river for bathing or defecation, leading to E. coli contamination. To access more learning and exam preparation materials, go to www.acemyexams.coza. This link is also in the video description below. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe and be the first to know when we upload new videos.